As you probably know, the UK left the EU political structures and the European Parliament on January 31st, 2020. And the Brexiteers blame the government for not implementing Brexit properly and others want to join the EU again in the UK. And the EU, of course, moved forward after the UK left. So in the next weeks, I will make a test here on this channel by bringing news about the EU in my midday videos. That will keep people informed what the UK left and what people want to return to, to make informed decisions and give it a more fact-based approach. And since my magazine channel is reserved for information on the development of the Russian war of aggression against Ukraine for the time being, that is another reason to do this here. But I anyway believe exactly my audience on this channel needs this information. And of course, there is a playlist EU here again now. I talked about the UK rejoining the EU Horizon program again. And last week I wanted to answer some important questions on this topic. And the EU gave some very good answers on the topic. For example, what is Horizon Europe and what does it mean for the UK? Horizon Europe is the world's biggest civil research and innovation program with a budget of 95.5 billion euros from the EU alone, coupled with the contributions of associated countries. It supports EU member states and associated countries in unlocking their national research and innovation potential by funding frontier research projects, fellowships, breakthrough innovation and the mobility of researchers. Horizon Europe sets ambitious goals to tackle some of the last, uh, biggest global challenges we face, such as health crises or the fight against climate change, as it reinforces technological and industrial capacities across the EU. Association to Horizon Europe will allow researchers and organizations in the UK to participate in the program on equal terms with researchers and organizations from EU member states. It will allow the EU and UK to deepen their relationship in research and innovation, bringing together their research communities. But it's not only Horizon. So what is Copernicus and what does it mean for the UK? Copernicus is the EU satellite system for observing and monitoring the Earth. It consists of a complex set of systems which collect data from multiple sources. Earth observation satellites and in situ set sensors such as ground stations, airborne sensors and seaborne sensors. It processes this data and provides users with reliable and up-to-date information through a set of services related to climate change and the environment, prevention and management of disasters and security. As such, Copernicus makes an essential contribution in reaching the EU Green Deal and Net Zero objectives. The UK will have access to all Copernicus products and services, and this includes the thematic services for land monitoring, marine environment, atmosphere, as well as climate change monitoring. The Copernicus products and services provided will be extended to cover the UK's territory. For the on-demand services, the UK will be able to access as an authorized user the Copernicus Emergency Management Service. In the security domain, this will depend on the cooperation agreed be between the EU and the UK in those relevant areas. UK companies and research institutes will be able to bid for contracts implemented under Copernicus. They will follow the same rules as companies from EU member states, except where the regulation of the EU space program restricts participation in procurement that are sensitive for security reasons. And the question always was, how much does the UK have to pay to take part in these two programs? Overall, it's estimated that the UK will contribute almost 2.6 billion euros per year on average for its participation to both Horizon Europe and the Copernicus component of the space program. This contribution is in line with the terms agreed in the Trade and Cooperation Agreement. But did they change the Trade and Cooperation Agreement for this? Uh, no, because all core provisions of the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, as agreed in 2020, remain applicable here. All safeguards under the Trade and Cooperation Agreement remain the same, including full payment of the participation fee 
and the automatic correction mechanism in case of UK overperformance. From when will these agreements apply then? Association to both programs will become effective as of January 1st in 2024. And uh, the question was if the, they have to pay for the time they weren't in. So no, they don't have to because the contributions will be effective from the start. That means January 1st in 24. And the researchers that were subject to the transitional arrangements are so far affiliated to a UK institution. Uh, they, they have benefited from a transitional arrangement, which allowed them to apply and be evaluated as other potential beneficiaries under Horizon Europe calls. However, in order to be eligible for EU funding, there needs to be an association agreement in place. In practice, this means that in most cases, UK entities were able to continue cooperation within Horizon Europe Research Consortia while obtaining their funding from other sources. And last week's agreement means that these researchers will be able to access Horizon Europe funding from 2024 work programs and onwards. But is there a correction mechanism to take account of the UK possibly underperforming or overperforming? And yes, indeed, there is. Um, that's built in for Horizon Europe. In case the UK obtains more receipts in grants than its con contribution for grants, the Trade and Cooperation Agreement stipulates that there is an automatic correction to the UK's contribution if it reaches a threshold of 8% over two successive years. In case the UK receives significantly fewer grants than its contribution, other correction mechanisms are provided for. The first way to rebalance the situation should be to try to improve the level of UK participation. If the UK overpays by more than 12%, it may bring the matter to the Joint Specialized Committee on Participation in Union Programs for consideration and agreement of appropriate measures to balance the situation. Given that the UK has not been fully part of Horizon Europe for the past two years, the Commission and the UK have agreed on a temporary and automatic mechanism to address any risks of critical underperformance by the UK for the remainder of the current MFF should, be, should the imbalance exceed 16%. But will the UK have access to Horizon Europe sensitive actions? As provided for by Article 22 of the Horizon Europe regulation for actions related to Union strategic assets, or interests or autonomy or security, the work program may provide that the participation is limited to legal entities established only in EU member states or to legal entities established in specified associated or other third countries in addition to member states. As for all third countries, the EU will assess UK participants access to such strategic parts of the Horizon Europe program. Will the UK's contribution be paid annually or another way? Well, the Commission will issue twice a year a call for funds to the United Kingdom that corresponds to the contribution of the United Kingdom under the Trade and Cooperation Agreement for each of the programs. Another question was why is the UK not participating in Eurotom or in Fusion for Energy or in the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor? Well, the UK has decided not to pursue its association to Eurotom and Fusion for Energy or ITER. This decision is guided by the UK's assessment that its industry's long absence from Eurotom and F4E cannot be reversed. But will the UK also participate in Erasmus Plus and other such programs? Well, the Erasmus Plus program is open to the participation of third countries under the conditions set out in the Basic Act establishing the program. Among these, third countries that become associated to Erasmus Plus have to participate in the program in full to ensure the synergies between the different areas in the program. However, the UK decided in 2020 that it did not want to participate in Erasmus Plus. And this means that UK participants have lost the chance to benefit from the program. During the period 2014 to 20, over 7,300 UK organizations were involved in the program. And the program 
benefited more um, than 197,000 UK particip participants, of which more 100,000 UK students went abroad in the framework of the program. But why did it take so long to negotiate this agreement now? Well, the conditions for associating the UK were not opportune in view of the overall UK-EU relationship. The agreement on the Windsor framework allowed association talks to resume, and therefore it's now time to move forward with the final steps for associating the UK, which under um, several others, it means that the European Council, this means the member states still have to agree after the general con uh, agreement between the EU and the UK. So it's not uh, completely fixed yet, but uh, usually it should only be a formality. But they waited quite, quite long and they discussed quite long. And that's why um, I wanted to make this video with the, the answers from the European Union, because um, it's important to show the benefits and that raises the question even more why they have made a big fuss out of it all the time in the UK government. And if you want to know more about Brexit, UK politics or the EU, the next video is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.